It's the, you know, and I think people say industry plans like, oh, that invalidates what somebody's done. Like he busted his ass and like made it, and he's a star. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's like Rocky's absolutely a star. Consistency at whatever you do. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I, I know, I know where producer grind came from. You know what I'm saying? Like, before it was even an office. But I know y'all had crazy work ethic. If you're there to work, work. Like, don't just be, like, there to just... If if you're a photographer and you're taking more photos on your phone than your camera, there's obviously you're there for the wrong reasons. Welcome back to another episode of the Producer Grind Podcast. Karen Tina L with me. What's good, fam? How you feeling? Chilling, bro. What's good? It's been a busy week, but we about to get into it. This Universal Music Group in-house mega producer helped usher in the new era of trap music and has worked with Drake, Kanye West, 2 Chainz, Future, Gucci Mane, 21 Savage, Ray Srimmer, Rick Ross, 50 Cent, Waka Flocka, Juicy J, French Montana, Wiz Khalifa, and Gorilla Zoe, just to name a very few. Please welcome to the show, Sunny Digital. Oh yeah. Yes sir. Hey, how you feeling today? I'm good, I'm just chilling. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Appreciate you taking our day for real. Yeah, exactly. Not really. I'm not, I feel like I have been flexing y'all for a minute, but <laughs> you're busy. That's it. We understand you're busy, bro. You no. Know? But yeah, most people know who Sunny Digital is, but for anybody that don't know who he is, go ahead and give him a little rundown. I hate doing that, bro. <laughs> you know, just I'm not like lie to you. Like, I'm just, just go look it up, man. Just go look up Sunny Digital, man. I'm not behind you behind. Mm-hmm. <laughs> nah, for real. I've been doing that for years, bro. Yeah. You know, like, I'm tired of doing it. Like, so at this point, you got to go. You got to go. Just look it up. I ain't here for no reason, he bro. He got a full Wikipedia page. <laughs> Just go ahead and look him up. That's not even updated, bro. They, not, they, don't, they don't even be on me 100%. For real? You know, they, they don't know everything, bro. Well, tell me uh, tell me about some of the events that led to your success. Like, I know you you built, like, a pretty much, like, an empire, you know, just with your name and everything. So just tell us about, like, what were some of the key things that you did to help build that and make that happen? Um, well, some of the key things that I did to kind of, like, contribute to, like, my success was, like, I just always kind of, like, did what I wanted to do. Mm-hmm. Even if it seemed kind of weird or it, it seemed like it was kind of, like, out of the ordinary, even though a lot of the things wasn't, it was just kind of, like, me doing my own thing. And it's usually like that when you're doing your own thing, like, um, or something that... that, that that you just believe in, though it's kind of it's kind of hard to kind of make somebody believe in something that they don't see. Mm. So you got to kind of paint it and make them see it, you know. So um, that was always my thing, though. But I never really realized it, though. It was always just me pushing forward, doing like my own thing. You know what I'm saying? Just kind of without double thinking myself, just press and go. You know? Cause well, who were some of the people that were telling you, know, like that you had to explain your vision to, or like? I mean, you got to explain your vision. Besides like, the haters, you know what I mean? I mean, like, everybody. Yeah, even to this day, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, you gotta explain that shit though. You know, like, um, cause people ain't gonna they they can't they can't get they can't, they can't get what you hear until you, like, make them hear what you heard. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, you know, like it's it's you know it's kind of hard to explain that though and make people understand it though. You know, especially people that don't make music too. Mm. You know, like, um, it's just kind of like easier for for people to kind of absorb it when they hear it and they can understand it in that in that sense though. But like, most of the times, like, um. I can sit here and I can rap a song that I feel like is a hit to y'all. I meant to me, I meant to say, and I know it's a hit in my head though, but it might sound stupid as shit to y'all though. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Right now, mm-hmm. you know, you know what I'm saying? Like, but I, I, it ain't no way I can make y'all believe that it's a hit other than it's just me saying it. But other than like, you know, that, that other than that though, like with, like with that, like it's kind of just hard to kind of like convey like the music, vision. Yeah. The vision without people actually hearing it and stuff though. So like, it just kind of come with it though. You kind of, um, and this, industry you kind of got kind of you got to like paint the picture you know like you can't learn just, how to sell your product yeah. did you did you ever uh you know go to college or nah <laughs> i stopped in high school i hated i hated school bro not, not even trying to down school but like that that was my thing school wasn't like it like it just made me sleepy every time i went <laughs> in the building like i was just super sleepy yeah. you know like but did you have any pressure from your folks to go or anything like that? I mean, everybody got pressure at first, though. I mean, the parent would be wrong if they wasn't telling their kids not to go to school, too, right? Mm. So, of course, my mom, she was telling me to go to school, you know, just being the right right parent and stuff, though. But, shit, we all, we it, it ain't no females in the room. You know, we all men in here. So, you know, it's kind of easier to kind of overturn what your mama say, you know, as, as a boy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. or not even go against the grain, but just, you know, you do your own thing. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, like you a man. You know what I'm saying? You're going to mm-hmm. do what you do. You know what I'm saying? So... It's kind of like, I, I ain't go against my mom, but I told her what I wanted to do, you know what I'm saying? Because it, it was like, I had, it wasn't a situation I got into, but like it was just like, just something that happened to where like the, the circumstance that came up to where I could 
finish out school or I can drop out though. That's how I, that's how I got out of school. You know what I'm saying? I, but when I dropped out, I knew like, you know, like I needed something though. So I had, as soon as I dropped out, I had went and got my GED. Mm-hmm. Like just following though, cause all the information was still fresh in my head. And it wasn't like I was like dumb. It was just like, it was just born, just kind of like being there. It was just born, you know what I'm saying? And went and did my GED, um, passed it the first time. Easy. Like it was super easy. Like, um, and I was on some like, when I passed it, I'm like, man, I could have, I could have been and did my GED. You know? I could have been up out of here doing doing what I wanted to do because, like, honestly, me graduating, that wasn't the highlight of my life. Mm. I wasn't looking forward to graduating. It was like, man, it's cool, but I'm looking for something bigger, though. Mm. You know, for a lot of people, it was like, that's that's the highlight of their life, even to this day. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, like that that's their highlight. You know what I'm saying? Like, for me, I'm like, man, that, that ain't nothing. Like, so, for me, I was most so I'm just in there just because, you know, my mom and them, and that's what it really was, but... Me, if I had the actual choice, I was like, man, I'm out of here. You know what I'm saying? Like, I ain't, use, I, I ain't using, like, damn near none of that stuff, like, right now. Back in high school, was you making music? Cause I know you started yeah. You started off your, uh, started off rapping, right? And then yeah, I started off rapping. Then um, I started on this little machine. And then I um, started on free loops and stuff. Um, but um, what was the question again, bro? I was just asking, like, back in high school, was you rapping? And then, oh, like, yeah, yeah, did yeah. you know that you wanted to... Become a producer? Did you know you wanted to be in the music industry back in high school? Is that why you had that that bigger vision? Uh, I just knew. I don't know. I, I knew I didn't want to do nothing regular. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? I couldn't really call what I wanted to do at the time, though, because I didn't know what I wanted to do, but I knew it wasn't like what they was trying to plan me <clears throat> on setting on doing, which is like the regular job. Yeah, it wasn't no nine to five. Nah, that, that, that wasn't like in my plans. I tried it, though. You know, I tried it, but they didn't hire me when I did try it. Like, <laughs> so you never I, had a regular job? Only job, only regular job that I had, and it was, still was kind of like, Irregular was um my mama, she worked at this complex, um, which we we lived there too. That was another plus about it. We lived there. And uh she worked there. And then she had got me a job there as the groundskeeper. Basically, you wake up, pick up the trash. Oh man. Boom. So I'm ba- I'm basically doing that. I go clock in, boom, pick up the trash. It only take about like an hour to pick up the trash, go back in. Mind you, I'm still clocked in though. Then <laughs> <You know? laughs> go to sleep, you know what I'm saying? But I'm right in the crib though. You know, it's so it's so comfortable. So oh, it wasn't yeah. like a real job. Then it's my mom in there. So she ain't really like flipping it out on me. Then like even the people that was that was actually working there, they knew what I was doing and stuff though, as far as like music wise and stuff though. So they wasn't like really like just on my back about doing work either. Like, I knew everybody there. Like they it was mostly like, oh, if you wanna, you know, get a job or something like that. And that was that though. But that was like the only job that I have ever had though. Like other than that, though, I've been just grinding this shit out, though, with, with the beats. Like, I've been selling them bitches, like, from when I was selling them for, like, $100 to $50. I was, I've was i been doing that shit for a minute. Like, mm. I, always, I always knew how to do that, though. You know, like, when I had the product and stuff, it was easy to sell it, though. I think, I think this is a, a good question for the, for the viewers, a lot of producers out there. So, you know, you kind of were taking your own path, you know what I mean? But before you had anything going, did you ever have, like thoughts of like, damn, am I really, am I doing what I'm supposed to be doing? You know, should I be going to school? Should I be, was there any of those kind of thoughts ever? Yeah, but not the going to school thing. I know, I know, I know, I know, it was, it was certain things that I knew I wasn't supposed to be doing. Just me, I was like, I can't do it. Like, it's just not me. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Like, I knew going to school wasn't one. I knew working, that definitely wasn't one, you know? So, um, but it definitely was times was like, I mean, it was cloudy times to where you don't really know what's going on though, yeah. you know, but I mean, you can't always just, be ahead of the curve with life and shit though. You kind of got to take risk and jump and figure out what's going to happen. You know what I'm saying? Like you got, it's like, a, like you got to figure it out. Like that's why like, I, I can, I can, I can tell people about this though, but you kind of got to go through it though. You know, like, and figure it out your way. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't even tell you how I figured it out though, but it's going to be totally different for everybody. You know, like, okay. everybody path going to be way, way, way different, but you know, just kind of, you feel it out. Just go by your feelings and stuff. Your good emotions, them shits ain't never wrong, bro. Never. You just, you know, and just do what make you happy, you know? Real shit. So I wanted to come back to when you were talking about having to explain your vision, right? Mm-hmm. Um, K.O. was passing around the knowledge a couple of weeks ago in that Kevin Hart book, and he was talking about his, um, how he had met with one of the most famous comedy reps um, in the game. He was just saying how, like, you know, he went in, he gave the guy his vision, and he just didn't get it. And there's a guy explaining to Kevin, hey, there's two types of people, people that when you give them the vision, they're going to be able to say it, and then people who don't get it until everybody else does, right? So with this industry being so small, you've had some people that didn't understand your vision, but you might've had to come back and work with them again or see them again. How does that conversation go? Um, Everybody act like they don't remember, first of all. <laughs> yeah. You know, like, just honestly though, you know, like that, that's how it always is. Like everybody act like they don't, like they don't remember. Like, um, 
But if, for me, it ain't no bad blood, though. It just kind of, like, made me feel like a better person, though, because I'm, like, oh, I'm, I'm actually, like, good at this shit, though. Like, I know what I'm doing, though. You know, mm-hmm. like, it's like y'all really losing out. Y'all, It's costing y'all more money when y'all don't listen to me, though, you know? Because mm-hmm. a lot of times, like, honestly, like, a lot of times, like, like during those times and stuff, I wasn't having money to be able to fund these artists myself, though. So what I would do is just bring them into a better situation to where we can make money together. Mm-hmm. So I point them in the right direction to these right people and stuff, though. But some of these right people at the beginning, they wasn't listening to me. And then when this person ended up getting hot, and they try to circle back around and sign them and stuff. And that cost 10 times more to sign them and stuff, you know? Mm-hmm. And I was trying to give it to y'all early and stuff. Y'all didn't want to take it. You know, when y'all could have got it for 20, 30,000, 40,000. When, when people be dead, broke backs against the wall, ain't got nothing, you know, 30 or 40, that, that'll work. You know, right. 50, that'll get the situation moving. You know, yeah, like yeah. for someone that ain't never really seen no real paper. Exactly, yeah. bro. You know, but like, um, and sometimes, you know, it start like that though, you know, like to where, you know, it'd be like that. But, um, so not even on some, like I told you so shit, on some, like, that cost y'all money. I mean, for me, it, I mean, it's I don't really care. You know, I, I just try because I, I, because really, I just always try to put people in better situations. Though I'm not yeah. looking to make no money from a lot of stuff. Like I make money just from putting people in better situations. Though you know, I'm not looking to make money from that specific situation. Though, so if you want to pass up on it, that's gonna be on your ass and shit. Though, and if you got a boss to report to and be like, "Dang, this nigga was in your office before," like, and you let it slip past, now you want to circle back around type shit. Though, like, <laughs> you you gonna be looking stupid, not me. You know what I'm saying? I'm still gonna be cool with this artist and stuff, though. You know, like that that ain't gonna change. Our relationship ain't gonna change, though. But <laughs> that shit happened damn near with everybody, bro. Like, like I swear to God, bro. Every artist, bro. Like, can you name one? Like, give give us like one or two big artists that you took them to somebody. Somebody was like, nah, and then later that that person got hot. All right. Um, I got all right. This with, with the world. All right, McConan. <laughs> I ain't take him nowhere though, but I was trying to tell people that he was gonna pop before he popped and stuff though. Mm. Wasn't listening. That that was just the goddamn, just like the people and stuff. His situation happened so quick though, like that I couldn't take him to no labels and stuff though. Even if I did though, they would have shot that down though, because it sounded so weird and like it was kind of so like different. It was like I was trying to convey my vision with the music to them though, but they didn't understand. So Drake had to come through and put his his language on it for them to understand what's going on, you know. But another situation, this shit was crazy. So with Twenty One Savage. I had, um, when, when we was first working, um, um, when we was first working, um, on the free Goo mixtape, Epic had came in town and they was, um, they was just looking for artists and stuff, though, or whatever, though, and they had a whole bunch of people. They had L.A. Reed and everybody, some of my people, um, my boy Chubby Boy, um, I was kind of, I was pissed off. I was like, man, y'all, y'all, it was just lame, though, you know, especially how it all, how, how like, that situation had played off, because I was like, man, these are the homies, y'all supposed to believe what I got going on, you know, yeah. like, y'all been knowing mm-hmm. what's going on, so, um, I remember, um, my boy Yaki, he was up there. Um, they called Yaki up there. I remember um, Co- Cody Shine, Cody Shane, she was up there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she dope. Um, Twenty One, we had went up there. It was somebody else, some some other people I went up there. I forgot, but they was like basically just come, coming out looking for artists and like sending people through and stuff though. But um, um, me and Twenty One went in there. It's epic. The whole staff in, in the big room, the A room, and um, in um, Patchwork. L.A. Reed in the middle and the rest of the staff all around him and stuff. Um, we start playing the music that, and all that stuff we was doing and everything. And, you know, like, they wanted niggas to perform and move around and shit, though. <laughs> like, you know, do the extra stuff, though. But 21 wasn't doing that. He wasn't with none of that shit, though. You know, he was just, just doing his shit, though, like how he usually do, you know, like, which which they got to respect, though, you know? And then, um, like, um, they basically passed on him and shit, though. You know what I'm saying? They had passed on him and then they ended up signing uh, Cody, Shine, Cody Shane instead, though, mm-hmm. that day, I believe. Or, or in that little, in that little, whatever happened while they was there, Cody Shane was the one they had um, end up um, getting and stuff. Mm. And um, and then fast forward, circle back around, like where, where everything started getting back popping again. <laughs> then uh, what you call it? Um, L.A. Reid and them, they went and signed him to Epic. You know what I'm saying? Like they circle back around, signed to Epic. I'm pretty sure it cost them a whole, whole, whole lot more money than it would have costed them back then, though, because mm. back then we was looking for a deal. You know what I'm saying? Like we was like trying to, trying to like. You know, get it going because, like I said, I I didn't have the money to really like just give out to niggas and shit though. So it was like, man, all I can really do is put you in a better situation to where you can possibly get more money. And me and you, whatever we doing, we could just keep on making money that way though. You know what I'm saying? So that's what I was really doing though. But um, that was one situation where they passed up, and I was like, I, I was like, I was pissed off though too because I was like, at that point, I was like, man, look, like 
bro, I've been doing this for years. Like, like as far as like throwing artists up, up, up to the <clears> oop <throat> and stuff. Though y'all don't trust in what I'm saying. Like, man, I ain't about to just stop what I'm doing and just you know going to something that I don't believe and it don't work though. You know, like a lot, a lot of the stuff that I was already doing or everything I had already done, that shit had worked in some type of way, shape, or form. Though, if people knew it or not, you know, like. That story you just told was interesting because did you see Liar Cohen on The Breakfast Club? I did. And so he was talking about he he called he called it the the trading and selling of artists like it's like it's an auction or, or rather like, like a stock. stocks, excuse me. And when when I hear you tell that story, right, here's the first I think of. I hear what Cody Shane was then and what 21 is then and what Cody Shane is now and what 21 is now. Now, don't get me wrong. Cody Shane is a good artist, but she's no 21 Savage, right? Mm -hmm. um, do you, what do you have to say about uh, Lior saying that there is this day trading of rappers and, and artists? I mean, that's what it is. You know, shit. I mean, shit, he just saying it. I ain't gonna lie to that. I mean, that's really what it is. You talking about like, like, like them, like, like basically, like trading off artists and stuff, like like going to different people. And well, in, in terms of like you know, hey, here's where Twenty One is. Here's what we think he's worth. Mm -hmm. We pass. We circle back now. Twenty One's worth a lot more now. Mm -hmm. Should we buy him while he's still relatively low, or if we see him in the future, we're gonna have to turn up, turn the price up? Versus we chose Cody Shane, and her stock is actually relatively down comparatively. You see what I'm saying? And so I, mm -hmm. I guess that's kind of just what's your opinion. They treat the artists like commodities and not like people or real artists. It's a business. You know, they're not looking at, like, the actual people. You know, and that, that was the difference between, like, when I, what I was trying to, like, do, like, as far as, like, from the label and from, like, what I was doing, though. I was more concerned about the person and stuff, though. That's why I was telling these labels, too. Like, um, like some labels, I was like, it was some, sometime I did get, like, offers and stuff, though. But I'm like, man, look, these like, these offers are so bad, though, that I can't tell these niggas this shit, though. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, because, like, like, was, like, a disrespectful, though. And I know, I know what's going on, though, too. And, like, like, I'm like, um, sometimes the shit should it be so bad. I'm trying to tell them like, even if they did sign this and it, you know, if 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 it becomes successful as I planned on it to become, like, they're gonna eventually figure out this is some bullshit though. Then they're not gonna know that it was you who who gave this shit out. They're gonna look at SD. You, you know what I'm saying? I'm mm -hmm. like, man, I be out, I be out every day. You know what I'm saying? Y'all be tucked away in y'all offices and stuff though. I gotta. You know, I, I'm out here every day. You know what I'm saying? I, I literally be out here like that's how I find these people just being around in the mix and stuff though. So it's like, man, like. I can't do no foul business out here type shit though, mm. you know, like, cause this shit, I'm too, I'm too like, I'm, I'm, I make myself accessible, like, you know what I'm mm. saying, like easy to be touched, you know what I'm saying, like, you know, I don't do no, I don't do no fuck bit, no fuck shit though, so it's like I ain't really gotta watch my back right now, you know what I'm saying, so, like, so you, so you said ten to twenty thousand might be what's considered like a low offer, right? In a sense, it's just, it just depends. Like you gotta put your you gotta put your artistry on the scale and just weigh it out. You know what I'm saying? If it's worth that, that's what it's worth right now. You know what I'm saying? But twenty thousand ain't, ain't about to be like some like some extra long ass deal. It's gonna be like, probably like some quick shit, some one in one out type shit though. You know? But just it just all depends. Everybody shit different though. Like there's so many ways you can go about a deal. Like you know, like twenty thousand could be a lot though, depending on what you're getting out of the deal. Mm -hmm. You know what they're doing for you. You know what I'm saying? In the time frame, you know, it could be a good deal, you know? So what do the bad offers look like, I guess? Bad offers is like really, all right, I didn't did got deals with nobody offering money. They should always offer money, like something, you know what I'm saying? If they want something from you, they should always be willing to give up something or like, you know, or give you some type of advance and stuff. But um, bad deals is like, I don't know, like... <laughs> Shit that just don't seem right, just ain't fair. Like you know, like I can't really explain it. You gotta sit there and be like, you, you just start squinting up your face, like, <laughs> like what the fuck, like on some like just like what the hell is this, like you know what I'm saying? Like contracts is fairly easy, to, easy to read though. But like the way that they like word them, it's just like the same. The first sentence just just going in the same circle over and over and over again for like a paragraph straight, just in different ways and stuff, you know. Mm -hmm. So like. If you feel like something ain't right, usually it ain't right, though, in them contracts and stuff, though, you know, like, but after reading so many of them, you, it's kind of like a standard, though. People don't feel like rewriting all this shit all the time either, though, so it's like standard shit, though, that, that's in there. You'll get used to reading, but, um, you know, <clears throat> bad contracts is like, I don't know, like, I can't really call a bad contract, you know, like. More about knowing your worth at that point in time. Yeah, and what you know, you, like, it just all depends, like, on who you are and what you got going on. And, you know, like you said, your worth, like, 
you know, like you just weigh it out like from there. Like you, if you're not giving up too much and you getting and you're not getting enough, I guess that's a bad deal. You know, I don't know, but who's to say what's enough and who's to say what's was not enough or whatever, you know, like. You ever been in a situation where you felt like it was a bad deal, but the artist wanted to take it? Um, You talking about like if I was working with an artist and stuff and it was a bad deal, like. Like a, like a deal came their way and you like, well, I don't know if you should take it. The artist might be like, yeah, I need that. You know what I'm saying? I'm usually, I'm good enough to kind of break it down with the artist and tell them like, oh, this ain't, you know, this ain't it. You know what I'm saying? This, that, you know what I'm saying? A lot of times, even with them deals with the artists and stuff, though, at this point, though, now, it's a waiting game, though, because, um, man, like, unless you just get ultimately just blazing hot, and if you do even get blazing hot, bro, you got to think everything will start weighing out, bro. You ain't going to have to do no deal. You're going to be able to go on the road and go goddamn clear your deal money on the shows Mm -hmm. and stuff, though. You know, like, Mm -hmm. like, it's almost kind of like you do deals kind of like when you in that hard space, like when you might fuck around and catch a hit or something and like you don't know what's going on. You know, I don't know. Like it's just, it's, it's very, it's, situations kind of define the, the sit, like the, the, the situation, like situations are, well, I'm about to say fucking. <laughs> Every situation of, different. <laughs> basically everybody's situation is going to be different though. You know, as far as with the, with the, with the, all that shit though, but like you know, like some deal, a deal might be like good for your time. It might be good for what you got going on right now. And like, don't let people scare you away from doing deals either, though. Like, they're not all bad though. Mm. It's just that people just getting the shit they don't know what they getting into. You know, like like three sixties and stuff, bro. That's not a bad deal when you think about how shit was going or how shit going though. Like when an artist can go on the road and just go make all the money and just you know, like not. Them that got to pay the label back and stuff though. That 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 that's what was going on. Like, cause when everything started going digital, like they was they was they wasn't. I feel like they wasn't making money. So it's like we got to make our money back some way though. Cause don't forget they advanced you all this money. Yeah, it's already right, right. cool. Like they need their money back. You know, like they trying to figure out how to get it though. And like you know, that's why you're taking a piece of the show, a piece of the merch, a piece of all this stuff though. But like, shit, it's it's really not bothering. The person's money and stuff, though. To be honest, though, it's just that, that they feel like it is, though, because it's taking a lot. It's taking a piece out of everything, though. But you gotta understand, though. Like usually, like when they're doing that too, that means they're putting money into this shit. Like they, they, they probably putting promotions and stuff. They're doing shit though that costs money. Like right. everything costs money. That's what people be forgetting. Bill Moore's putting you on playlists. All yeah, that stuff. you know all that shit though. Like even though you might not see the money being like physically spent on you, it's being spent though. You know, so like. They got to they got to make this shit back some way though. It is a business for them though, you know? Like mm-hmm. they got to keep it going. They can't flop on you. You know? Like you know, you need like you got you got to get to that that point of being like Wiz Khalifa and them and like them big names that carry the labels and stuff though, you know? Mm-hmm. To where it really matter though. But until then just kind of like I mean, if you do if you do a deal, just sit back and play your role, man. Shit. It's pretty easy. Like so a, a lot of people like we were saying, a lot of people, you know, kind of think you're new newer to rapping, which, you know, we know is not true, but Recently, like in the past, like what two years, I'd say you kind of have kind of transitioned to to more of a rapper than producer. What uh, you know, what kind of has been the reason to bring that that that's kind of brought about? Um, it just kind of like I got the the platform to do it right now. Mm-hmm. You know, people gonna pay attention. <clears throat> um, then I just kind of got tired of the artists. Still, I still am. You know what I'm saying? I'm not really like big on like dealing with these artists and stuff though. Like. Honestly, I don't be fucking with these niggas, man. They they be on some other <laughs> shit though, for real. Like, <clears throat> like as a producer and stuff, like though. Disrespectful like disrespectful shit, cap shit. Like, what just you? it just like it's so many limitations being a producer. Like, so many cap ass limitations being a producer and stuff, though. You know what I'm saying? Like, I see how artists treat other artists and how artists treat producers. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And like, it's just like it's like different levels and stuff, though. Like, like you looked at as like less than. Yeah, it's tears to it, though. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? But, like, when I'm an artist, I can talk to an artist as an artist and stuff, though. You know what I'm saying? They're going to respect me in that manner, though. You know? Like, but when I'm a producer, they just, like, oh, you just a beat maker, you know? <laughs> yeah. You know? That, like, I, I, don't really, I don't really fuck with I that. I find a lot of irony in that, right? Because this is the same guy where he brought you the artist and they pass, but you just a beat maker. You the one I mean, that's identifying talent. You the one that's bringing motherfuckers through here. You tell them that. You tell them that. <laughs> I know what I'm doing, shit. You know, like, shit. I, I know, I know what I'm doing. You know, like, I know what's going on. But mm-hmm. so, you know, um, a big part of the producer community conversation has been people talking about um, organizing a union, uniting producers. You've kind of been at the forefront of that conversation, right? Mm-hmm. So, what would a producers union look like in 2018? I'm working on it, actually, bro. On some slick shit, bro. I'm building this studio right now, like. 
it's gonna be something like like I don't know, bro. I don't want to spill the beans on it though, cause it ain't it ain't it ain't locked in. And I don't want nobody running off with the idea either, though. Mm. To be honest, though, just just know it's gonna be a home for like producers and stuff, though. Like I'm gonna make sure everything good, though. You know, like I'm trying to take care of all the people, all the producers, like all the right producers and stuff. Everybody who understand what's going on, you know, like just. I don't know. It's kind of I don't want to spill too many beans on it though, cause I'm just I'm still putting it together. But it, it's it's in the works definitely now. Like people been on my back about it, about doing it. But um, when we when I turned on the Instagram thing here, that was it was like four questions: producer union, producer union, producer union. <laughs> yeah, they yeah. I'm working on it right now. Like I'm building a studio in Atlanta. Just like, I can leave it at that right now. I, I took that step. Though. I'm building a studio in Atlanta right now. Like it's yeah. We've been seeing on your story. Yeah, Coming like together. it's pretty big. So um. What would be, we had two follow-up questions to that, but I'm only going to ask you one. Mm -hmm. What are the logistical obstacles obstacles standing in the way of a producer's union? Everybody being on the same page. Everybody got their own agendas and then, like, success, too. Like, if somebody catch one hit, then they might start veering off and, you know, might start doing their own thing and just breaking breaking the union and stuff, though, you know? Like, it's just, it's just, it's, it's kind of hard to get everybody on the same page and have everybody understand, though. So this producer's union is going to start small. It's going to have to start small and people going to have to anticipate to be inside of it, though, you know, and just grow like that, though, where it's almost like a membership, though, that you kind of get specially selected to be in, though, you know, like something like that. Though I'm not sure, though, but like you just kind of got to make it exclusive, though, just. So this you know, isn't going to be for someone that just started off producing. They just want to join the, right, the producer using at first. Not at first. It can't first. be like that, bro. It's got to be. I got to add some value to it. Mm. You know, like, I got to, right now, it's only value in the ideal. I got to put some actual liquid value into this mm-hmm. shit, though. You know, like, make people kind of, like, respect it and understand it, though, and make people not want to go off and, like, create another union or try to do something similar to it, though, or, you know, like, just, you know, I, I got to figure this shit out, like, internally first, though, before I just... So, like, what is, like, your overall vision, like, aside from building the studio, you know what I mean? But, like, is it that you want producers that the overall goal is just to have producers that have the same respect as artists or like what's the overall goal for the union? Basically what you said, like, you know, everybody just had the same level of respect for each other though. You know, like just, you know, cause everybody just as important to each other, you know what I'm saying? And, and everybody need to be treated kind of like that too, you know? So my thing is just, I guess everybody just having respect for each other. Mm. Like, that make that makes sense. Yeah, you know? <laughs> like, like uh, that's that's all I can really see though, because I done been through through like so much of the bullshit though. Then like even like just producing this stuff though, it's just so much bullshit. Like just it look cool, but like just it's different, bro. <laughs> You've had a lot, of, or not you, but there's been a lot of artists um, that have come out and just made these broad sweeping statements about um, producers and engineers. Some of them good, some of them bad. Mm-hmm. Um, and here's the conversation we always had. Do you think these guys are trolling or you think they really feel this way? Like you had Russ come out and say some shit. Like you think these guys really feel this way or do you think they're trolling? So what, what you mean? Like So so like Russ came out and he was like, oh, the reason the music is so trash right now. I don't know if you remember this. Mm-hmm. Um, he was talking about because nine out of ten beats I get in my inbox are whack. And it's just like that's such a disrespectful statement. He has to know that's going to offend producers. Right. So why would he say something like that? Can you Can you speculate on that? I got to hear exactly what he said again, though, to kind of break it apart, though. But I'm going to keep it a buck. Like, I feel like, all right, so, so. I got to hear exactly what he said because I don't want words to get twisted around. I I know how this internet shit go. You know what I'm saying? Like, (laughs) I ain't with none of that shit. But, like, um, I'm going to keep it a buck, man. Like, he don't be lying about a lot of shit, though. Mm. He's just not the right person to be saying a lot of this shit, though. Mm. It, it just like when he delivers it, it don't. It don't even matter. Yeah. He he ain't, he's not delivering it the wrong way. It's just the person who's delivering it, though. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? If Metro said it, it wouldn't be wrong, bro. If I said it, it wouldn't be wrong. If Sizzle mm. said it, it wouldn't be wrong, though. It's just like Russ. I feel like a lot of people was feeling like Russ is talking to a community that he's not in. Yeah, but he's in it though too. In in a sense exactly. though, with, you know, exactly. like he's in it though. So I feel him though. Like he feel like like you know like he do got some say so because he do make beats though too. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, so exactly. You, you know, get what I'm saying? Like, so, so I, I, I know, <clears throat> I know his standpoint though. But like, as far as the community, you know what I'm saying? He's got to be like someone from the culture. You know exactly. He's in the culture though, but, but it's like it's it's a, it's a community within the culture though. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Like, like when, you, when, when, when you say when you talk about producers and the producers that he was talking about though, 
when you say them people and stuff though, his name's not in that group though. He got mm. his own category, like where he doing his thing at though. You know, that's a, that's what I feel like. What people was going wrong at though, his message was not wrong. That shit was hundred percent right. I'm sitting back. I, I was saying like I was like, why are these niggas mad though? Cause if, like I go through the shit though, like go through shit and it's, it's some whack beats in there though. But I could say that though. People gonna respect it from me though. I guess it, rather than coming from like from like. From like Russ or somebody else that's not it's not even just Russ, anybody who's not in the in, who's not in that side though, or don't understand that side though. You know, you can't just come in just bashing that shit though, you know? All right. You if know. I'm a producer in the community, I look at it like this. I learned from a Sunny Digital. I didn't learn shit from Russ. And that's not me just that, Russ. Yeah, and that, that that's that's what I was basically saying. I'm like, people probably like they like see, I, I'm in here, I know he I know what he do. I respect what he do. I, I fuck with that shit though. That's the shit that I'm trying to do. You know what I'm saying? But like like as far as him like talking about the shit that we have done and shit though, you know what I'm saying? Like, like, or or the shit that that we known for, you know what I'm saying? Just be like, you know, like like I said, he's saying the right message. He's just not the right person to be mm-hmm. saying it though. Like, cause if I said the same shit, people would maybe be like, damn, maybe I need to switch it up. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, like, you know, like, you know, it just it's, it's it's the message was not wrong though. Pe- people they just come with that pre the pre the pre feeling about Russ was just which is the whole he takes all the L's and all that shit <laughs> right, though. Right. They came they came they came into the situation feeling like that already though. So and then when he said that though, they just hopped on. Yeah, just you know what I'm saying? Town. They, they just they just went. They was like, okay, we now we got something to really latch on to. Yeah, you know what right, I'm saying? Right. And what, what I'm saying is like. He wasn't right nor wrong though, but he just he just wasn't the candidate to really be saying that though. Like if Sizzle said that, nobody would have cared. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's just Russ, bro. You know what I'm saying? It's Russ saying it though. Like like the, everybody, you know, they they got something against him for some reason though. Like because of your position, yeah. because of your position in the culture, do you feel a need to speak for producers at times because of that? Just I mean, I don't know what my position is though. Sometimes I be confused though. You know, as far as like you know like you know like. I'm known, but shit, you know, you got your, you got your other people, your metros and your sizzles and stuff though, who really, really known and stuff though. You know, I feel like I'm just kind of like I'm in a cut. You know, I feel like people just like to nitpick and hear what they want to hear from me though. Not everything though, they gonna nitpick and hear what they want to. So like, I'm not, I'm just, I'm just saying what I'm saying. You know, like I don't know, like they, I feel like, 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 like they, they. You know, just stay listening to them over there. You know what I'm saying? I'm I've been popping what I've been popping and shit mm-hmm. though. Y'all can come and listen, tune in whenever though. This shit be going on forever though. But like, they just tune in when they want to. You know, they catch the bits and the pieces, but not the whole thing. Do you feel like you're overlooked or not? Um, like, do you feel like people overlook look you in the industry or don't really respect everything that you've done for their culture? Really, both. You know, it's either our combination. They just don't know. Mm. But then it's a whole combination of like. Ain't nobody saying nothing either, which is kind of messed up a little in a sense, though. Like no one's vouching. Like was it vouching? Yeah, Vou- vouching, yeah, vouching for no you. Vouching, yeah, yeah. Ain't nobody saying nothing about anything that's going on. They just letting it go on. And I, I'm the type of person I am, which everybody know. I don't really just be boasting about myself and stuff, you know? Yeah, yeah I was going to say, chill. you think it's part of the reason because you're just more of like a laid back, humble kind of guy? Like, that's. Yeah, I be chilling, but I mean, you know, people see what be going on with me. I be chilling, but I tell I tell people how I feel all the time, though. You know, I be, I come with the chill vibes, but I'm going to tell you what's going on, like how I feel and stuff, though, all the time. You know what I'm saying? But like I said, like, a lot of the times, a lot of stuff, too, like, yeah. I don't know if it's because I'm chill though, but I just don't. I don't see that being a problem. I see people more like, like buying into that though, or liking that though. You know, I'm not like I'm just, I'm almost like just as regular as everybody else in the room. You know, that's how I look at myself. You know, mm-hmm. but you know, I don't shit. I don't. I don't really know shit. I'm just I, like, but but like I said, all my peers sit back and watch this go on though too. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know. You know, I don't really. I be saying back. I be like, you know, I'm not. I'm not expecting them to say nothing. No, but you know, if you, if, you know, these is my homies and stuff. Though I would be like, nah, this this was going on. If I'm if I'm in a position, you know, I would be like, oh, nah, this was going on with him over there. Like letting everybody know, like, man, this was really going on. Like, cause you know, people know what's going on. It's just people choose not to tell people what's going on. <laughs> Do you feel like a part of that is because you're so laid back? They feel like, well, if he's not gonna speak on it, I don't have the right to speak on it. Nah, or is it? Do you feel like it's just a choice? It's, it's just a straight choice, up a choice. Though, because you know these people, they come up with me though. They know me. They know me. People, a lot of people, they know me, so they know how I am. You know what I'm saying? Like, like they know how I am. They know how I am. So it's like you know, like I, I didn't know I'm chill and laid back though. You know, they know that. You know, so it ain't like it ain't like it's something new. 
But, you know, when it's time for me to scream for everybody else, or, you know, stand on the front line for everybody else, I'm there. You know what I'm saying? So. Did you have a relationship with Splice at one point? I still do. You still do. Can you talk about that a little bit? I don't really want to. I ain't gonna lie. I I, I mess with them heavy. Heavy. Like, I, I salute them, though. But, like, I've been putting a lot of people, like, not a lot of people, though. They've been doing their own thing, too, though. But a lot of people, like, been asking me about it. And I've been, um... And I've been kind of like co-signing it and just being like, oh yeah, yeah, I fucks with it though. You know what I'm saying? Like on some shit like that though. But they've been coming to me like like a lot of my peers, a lot of people who who work with me, and they be like, hey, is is Splice like is that the move right there? I'm like, they they asking me like I work for Splice now at this point though, mm-hmm. you know. And I'm like, man, I'm basically over here sending like everything y'all way. You know, y'all don't even know all these people ask me like come double back and ask me like, hey, is this really what's going on over here? Wow. Mm-hmm. I can easily be like, hell no. Nah. Wow, you know what I'm saying? But like, mm. like I don't really want to, you know, like I ain't really, I ain't really like about to be sitting here just going crazy on them though. I, I fucks with them heavy though, but like, like I don't get no commission from doing that no more. Yeah. Man. You know what I'm saying? Like I don't get no commission from just sending everybody over there and then like everybody make their money and stuff though. You know, mm-hmm. they not they not looking out for me on some like you know. Not Is that the first time that's happened? What? Where you feel like um. I don't know if endorsing is the right word, but you're representing a company and you feel like, hey, they're getting business off that, but you ain't. I mean, I feel like they're supposed to get business off of that. That's, that's what it's for, though. But like now if it's coming through me and they ask me and they, they want to reconfirm with me and stuff, though, and they're only going to do it when I say, oh, yeah, this good. I'm doing it with them over there, too. You know, if I'm reconfirming and like, OK, well, shit, I should get something. I should get some type of kickback, like not from them, but probably from the company or something, mm-hmm. though. You know, Most like definitely because I'm sitting right here, like confirming with my friends. Like, hey, that, this is what's yeah, up. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? The people like like they, they come in to ask me like, hey, they already did stuff with y'all. You know, like they already they didn't already talk to y'all. But, you know, they come in to ask me and making sure just, you know, it's on multiple occasions, different people and stuff, though, too. You know, and I, I ain't never talked down on them at all, though, but. I'm at the point where I'm like, I'm just not about to just amp it up all, all day and stuff though anymore though. But you know, like shit, I did what I did. They did what they did. He like Avon Barksdale in prison. They gotta come get his advice on all type of shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, so, it sounds. Oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. It sounds. It's, it's, I was about to say. It sounds like the same thing is just happening in a bunch of different ways. Like the situation with Splice, with people not like Splice not. But I'm sending you the kickback, you know. Yeah, what I mean? But I don't, I don't know if they even know that though. You know what I'm saying? Because True. I just kind of do it on the humble. Well, I mean, but even aside from Splice, uh, just like with the artists, and you bringing the artists or bringing the artists to those labels, and <clears throat> like you said, they don't really understand the value, or they don't. I don't know. I guess it's just almost like being overlooked, really. Like the value yeah. that you bring is being overlooked. But you know, but it always comes back. But it sounds like things are always coming back around in your favor, though. Mm-hmm. Kind of, sort of, but not really. You know. My favorite would just be able to just don't even have to go to these people. My whole thing, that'd be my thing. Like, I won't, you know, if I was able to really fund all these artists and everything myself, like from the beginning, like if I was able to do it, I, what I was trying to, even trying to preach the idea to one of these labels, like, man, y'all just give me a, give me, give me a label and give me some money, like right when I needed it at the time and stuff, like right when I needed that shit and I go and get all these artists, that's when they should have done it, you know, like that's when they should have just, you know, put that bag in my hand though and I would have had everybody, it would have been, been way easier to deal with situations and stuff though, like, you know, we won't have to be paying like certain people, certain prices and stuff, you know, just off the relationship though. But now, not a lot of stuff going through like labels and stuff though, like with, with like, just all, like a lot of artists and stuff though, when the label come attached though, people be attaching a big price tag too, you know? So, I don't know, it's just. So let's, let's, let's uh, do a scenario here. All your credits taken away, all your connections taken away. You're just a young producer starting out in 2018. What are some of your first steps? Say what? You're just, so we take away all your credits, take away all your connections. You're just an average person here trying to, you know, start a beat making career in 2018. What are some of your first steps that you would do? <clears throat> I don't know. 2018 is way different from like 2000 and goddamn. What was that? 2000 and- Five, six, seven, somewhere. It's different, bro. Like, um, I started young. I had I had this ideal in my head though. Like, I had I was like, man, let me get this school on lock first. When I get the school on lock, it kind of like just spread. Any any school, I was just kind of like on. So let me just get the school on lock though. Mm-hmm. You know, you know like so college or something. I did middle school. Middle school, when I was in middle school, I, I just came, brought beats, let people hear it. Oh, okay. You know what I'm saying? Just getting people hip to the idea that he makes beats. You mm, know what I'm saying? Mm. And got down when the seventh grade, we, I went up to Michigan. I stayed up there for like a year. 
I'm just letting them know. You know what I'm saying? It's spread in school, though. You know, in school, it's just like people just talk. You know, it's not that many people making beats either. I was going to say, back making, then, you probably like the only one. Yeah. Right? It ain't that many people making good music, though, either, though. There's a lot of people probably making it, though, but actually making, like, some old. It sound kind of decent. Y'all probably can make it out of your <laughs> school type shit, though, you know? like, like yeah, So I, you were branding yourself, like, early. Yeah, but I ain't really know it, though. I was just kind of doing it, though. I was like, okay, let me just get this group at this school and stuff, though, and, you know, I just kind of, I was just building my brand as as the producer, like, then, though, too, like. Was you more, like, just having fun with it at the time? Kind but of, you also but, knew what you were working yeah, towards? Yeah, I knew what I was working towards, though. Like, I knew I knew I wasn't just doing it for the fun of it, though, mm-hmm. like. I knew I was learning stuff, though, like, I knew, but it, was, it was still, like, it was, like, I was still growing, too. I was just, I was still growing, like, learning stuff. Going through stuff like it was still cool though. Like <clears throat> I don't know, but if I even if I had went to college, bro, like my thing was I was like I, I even thought about it. I was like man, I can go to college anytime in my life. You can go there and get it popping, like you know, getting popping <laughs> in the college. Like it's so easy, like to kind of get like kids, like or or people like in those type of areas, just kind of like in tune with what's going on because like it's like it's like they in their own little world. You get that little world on lock and they just start spreading it out on outside of that stuff and people just keep on spreading it. Like, it's, it's kind of easy. Like, mm-hmm. that's what that's kind of like how I had started, though. But, like, as far as, like, I don't know if that would work, like, now, the days and stuff. I'm pretty sure it still would, though. The school, school route is always the, the easy route. You know, you can do the music for the school, bro, and you just on top of the school. Then, you know, like, everybody going to know you then, you know, then it might be easier nowadays. Now, now I'm thinking about the it. Social shit. media. Yeah. I'm about to say, yeah. It's like, the same might... thing B-King was saying. Well, yeah. I'll, I'll say like, because I work with a lot of high school kids uh, mm-hmm. that do music and what I'm learning is that's their first audience, right? So mm-hmm. it's like, oh, I got 2,000 fans. It's everybody at their school, which is smart. Yeah, I mean, shit, 2,000 turned to 4,000 because like all these schools, they ride, they got the rivals and all this stuff like in, in school. Them, them four years, bro, you can do a lot if them four years, bro. If, if if you was like on the same shit I was on, like I'm just here to goddamn, you know, meet these know these people and you know just I'm I'm here, you know, just being here. For really, school, just a yeah, network. But, yeah, 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 just like a network. This yeah. is a networking circuit, but I, I ain't really noticed it though. But I'm like I'm I'm here, you know what I'm saying? Just for that though, just to meet people, have people know me, you know what I'm saying? And that shit worked out like so perfect, like like and if I would have like really maximized on it, like when I had started, I started going to Grady downtown and um. We had the block schedule, so we had like these two hour periods and stuff. Though just hit Atlanta, man, bro. I could have been like, I, but I was like, I ain't know nobody up there, so I was kind. It was kind of hard for me to kind of like, like move around and stuff. I was getting to know people and stuff, though. But if I was able to like really know people and like people know what I was doing and stuff at the time, like it would have went crazy just because we had like them them long ass two hour blocks and stuff. Mm. Though, like, well, I would have just, I, I was still going crazy though. Like people, people knew, but like. I came when I came down when I came like and started going to school down there. That's when I really had started engineering too. Like I was already engineering, but I had really started engineering and started like recording people, and just learn pro tools from there. Really, well, that's what's up. <laughs> so you're still signed to Universal? I don't know. <laughs> oh, that's a that's a serious answer. You don't know? That's a serious answer. I don't know. I don't know the status, man. Like I was just thinking about it today. Like I'm out. I'm. Technically, I'm out the deal. Like technically, like I'm out the deal. So you fulfill the requirements of the contract. I went to court. Talk about it. Can, what can you talk about? <laughs> we won. That's really about it. You know, I've been fighting it for like for a minute, for a long time. Like I was going back and forth with them, but um, yeah, we had. I, I we we went to court. What was the major issue? Um, a co-publisher, somebody in the middle, like the middleman, he was kind of like, which is kind of weird. It's just like a weird situation. And then like, I just felt like, um, like Universal would just land it happen, you know, mm-hmm. just land it, land it happen. Not ever thinking that I would probably get out of this hole that I'm in though. They just sitting there letting all this shit happen. Knowing I'm doing all this work and knowing I ain't seeing none of this money and stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, and all this stuff happening, you know, we tell them, man, this is not morally right, man. Like, yeah. you know, like for a long time, like for real, nigga wasn't making no money on no producing end, though. You know, that's another reason why, like, you know, like we was like, why I was like, man, fuck this producing shit. Like this shit is too stressful. Like pe- people ain't know about that, know about that end, though. Like the actual business side, like, like, and, like why I started rapping too. Like that, that, that played a big role in it. Like yeah. all that publishing shit, though. Like, man, like it's like, bro, I wasn't seeing no money from it. Like. For a minute though, even though I was supposed to though, you know, like, but I had got so used to it. I got I had got so used to it though, I had started figuring out different ways to make money outside of just like beats. 
that's when I started doing shows and like start learning about building my brand and all that stuff and use my brand to get endorsements and stuff and like all that stuff outside of it though. But like, um, that's why I really slowed up on like making beats too, because as I was like just heating up, I was like feeding somebody else you know, mm. versus like feeding me. So I was like, this don't make no sense, bro. Do you, you know, think so. you would have, I mean, you seem like a resourceful person that would have found all these outlets of uh, these streams of income anyway, but uh, do you think that being, having your back against the wall and having to find a way to eat, that's how you start to build your brand? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> you got to find a different way to make some money in the same, in the, in the same business. I ain't want to leave. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I'm already in it though too. I'm, I'm knee deep in it though. I'm in it. I'm in this shit though. Like <clears throat> when I did my deal that was, that was kind of bad and stuff like, you know what? We can go back to them bad deals. A lot of bad deals don't look bad when you in a bad situation. Mm. You know what I'm saying? When you in a bad situation, anything, anything like yeah, anything that feel like that's gonna push you forward too, like or anything that's got some numbers on it, anything, bro, it's gonna you gonna be like, man, fuck this, like, mm. man, where the fucking pen at? Give me that shit. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? Like, give it to me, like, man, like, swear to God, bro, like, you know, just trying to get because you're gonna be like, man, I got, I got to do this, like, to get out of the situation, though, you know. You think a lot of people think like there's going to be a lot more that comes with that. Like, oh, I'm going to be around all these artists. I'm going to be, they're going to be, you know, yeah. doing all this and that. Mm -hmm. Like, ideally, yeah, that's how they kick it to you, though, too. Like, that's how it look. But what does it really end up being like? Just nothing. Like, man, I'm signed to a label, bro. I'm signed, I'm signed to Atlantic. People don't even know that. Do they help you get placements? Placements, like, well, I'm signed to Atlantic as an artist, bro. I do. I get all my own placements, bro. Like all the placements that I, I know, all the people I get placements with, though. And that seems to be the story. Every producer, like, every producer we talk to that has a deal is like, man, everything yeah. I do is off my own strength. Yeah, but I'm not. I'm not one of the producers that was coming in looking for them to hold my hand, anyways. Though, I was. I already knew what was going on. Like, man, this is a big company. Like, they not looking. They, they, man, this is a business, bro. Like, they not in here to goddamn like. They gonna help who, who who's goddamn bringing in all the money and stuff. They gonna put them where they need to be at though. But if you like one of them people, they gonna. All the, this is like a big ass monopoly board to them, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like you said, what like with the Leo, the Leo stuff. Like it's a big ass monopoly board to them and stuff, bro. It's a business and stuff. So yeah. like, man, if somebody got even a spark of anything going on over there, and when I say a spark, a spark for them can be just one hit. You know what I'm saying? These are people that's been dealing with hits for that's, that's all they've been dealing with for since they came out when the business started. Just hits and hits, hits. They they know that's all they know. They been, they got millions, they got hundreds of hits, they got catalogs of hits and stuff doing. You got one hit, that one little spark. You know what I'm saying? They gonna be like, okay, you know what? You got something going on. We're gonna take a little chance on you, boom. But we got all this stuff going on over here. You know what I'm saying? Like, we just gonna, you know, we got a little See 200, you, little, you know, a little 200,000, whatever. This ain't hurting us. That's little money right. to us. You know See what I'm saying? What you like, can do with it, Tyson. See what you can do. Like, even, even if you don't do nothing with it, that's not hurting us. You know what I'm saying? We still got these hits over here that generating all that money we just gave you. You know what I'm saying? We just we just bet like if it, if it do work, you're gonna just add to this pile. If it don't, then shit, that's just the end of that. We lost two hundred. Mm -hmm. We just made four hundred over here. We not really losing. You know what I'm saying? We just gambling all around the board. You got a spark, a spark, boom. Hey, what you got going on over there? Sign him, boom. If you letting us sign him right now, boom, get him. You know what I'm saying? Like if it's any spark, you know what I'm saying? Like they not messing up on that though. If you it ain't even gotta be a hit, bro. It can be a semi hit though. <laughs> if like got potential in it, anything that's got potential in it though, they they willing to. Put up for that, bro. It don't cost them that much though. These people are making millions, bro. They got a they got an account that's just made for like they got an account that's like that, that's like unclaimed royalties. That's like M's, like just money just stacking up and shit. Doing like after a certain amount, I mean after a certain time, believe like that that money just reverts back to them or something like that though or Damn. something though. Just be people that don't know like where, where, where they money be, not not where they money be at though, but like it just be like unclaimed royalties right. and stuff though, you know. But like um. Then they got budgets just for like for shit that just be like failing and stuff though. Or if it don't work and stuff though, like it's like shit just for that though. Like it's like they ready to lose, bro. They a big business and stuff though. You know, mm. they were they take L's when you in that when that business and stuff though. But they take big wins though too, like huge wins. You know what I'm saying? Like. The follow up question was, what are the pros and cons? Here's what I heard: Pro, if you in a bad situation, take that shit. Con, it's a business. Basically, I mean. Pros, I mean, it's a lot of pros to it too, bro. Like, it just depends on you. Like, I, I wasn't going in expecting shit, though, in no situation, though. I was like, my thing, my, the only thing I was expecting was the check that they said, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm just going to take that check that, and do what I do because I am who I am, though. I still can move around how I move. I can get in any room. What were you responsible for delivering? For what? Uh, as far as the contract. Which one? Uh, the the, the first one. Um, the Universal. Um, if you see, hadn't right, took see, him, if right. you hadn't took him to court, what was you gonna have to do to get out of it? 
it really wasn't too much that I really had to do, to be honest, though, because I wasn't fighting Universal in the court, though. I was really fighting the, the middleman and yeah. stuff, though. But Universal is kind of like head honcho over everything, though. I understand their position. They like, they standing back like, you know, we don't want to get in between what y'all got going on. You know what I'm saying? Y'all figure this out. But I'm like, man, this is just a morally right. You know what I'm saying? I'm supposed to be signed to y'all. And when, when I put out stuff, though, y'all, are, you know, y'all, y'all, are, you know, Put that up on y'all board, like, oh, this is a universal um publishing group or whatever, um, writer who wrote this or whatever though. You know what I'm saying? It's gonna go on y'all board. So, you know, like don't if y'all if y'all not gonna help me out, don't take my credit either. Though. Exactly. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's mm-hmm. how I was feeling. You know what I'm saying? That's just how I was feeling. But um with that whole court stuff like that, it was it was fairly easy though. It wasn't but it was it was still lengthy. It was like a long process though to get to, to what we was at though. Like shit took me literally like from the time I got into that deal. So when I first signed that deal, I, I signed that deal like when I was fucked up. I was like, man, this shit probably not going to work, but I'm about to do this. You know what I'm saying? And I'm about to take this risk, what I always do. Right when I did that, shit started working. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So right when shit started working, I was trying to dig myself out of that hole. You know what I'm saying? I had, nah, I was already, I had jumped in the hole that was goddamn super deep, and I was trying to dig myself out of it the next week. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Mm. Took me forever. You know what I'm saying? But... You know, even when I just got out of it and stuff, though, I'm at the point to where it's like I'm just just kind of like happy to be like just a free man and stuff again, though. You know, like when I said I don't know if I'm with Universal, like I don't know, like that shit cloudy as shit, though. We don't, I don't know, like what's going on. Like I ain't really like 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 back then when I was really feeling like when I was going through it and like you know like I'm like I was really like really talking about it and being vocal about it though, mm-hmm. but like I didn't put up with it like for so long and I didn't like. Figured out other ways how to make revenue and stuff, and like you know, it's it's really not bothering me like no more. So I'm not really vocal about it though. It's and kind I'm of not, working around it. Yeah, I'm not even working around it. I'm just not even thinking about it, bro. To be honest though, like you know, it'll come. Like it's eventually gonna come back. Everything gonna snap back in place though. You know what I'm saying? I'm just kind of like just working, just doing it though. Now, like I'm trying to make it a hobby anyways though. So I'm not even like really trying to like look forward to that to be making money. But like at the time, like when I was going through it, I needed that shit though. Yeah, you know, like I needed that money and shit though. Like, I feel like too, like that's that's like with that when I was going through that, that that kind of held me back a lot though. Like as far as like me popping off like as big as I was supposed to be, I was going through that situation and like that was financially fucking me up though. Like mm-hmm. I couldn't get ahead. Like you know what I'm saying? Like I was like staying afloat and doing what I was doing, taking care of like like my family and like myself and them, like everybody around me and stuff though, doing what I'm supposed to be doing though. You know what I'm saying? But. I don't know, this shit, it was just different, bro. But, like, now, now, like, I'm not really, like, worried about it, though, because I've been not worried about it for a minute, though. I've been living without it for a minute, though. And so, like, it's like, it's just a plus right now at this point, though. I'm like, oh, it's cool. You know, like, I'm I'm happy. Don't get me wrong. I'm happy to be, like, done with it and stuff, though. But it's it's like, I'm like, oh, it's cool. You know, I didn't, now I'm through it. You know what I'm saying? Like, like... I I even got a big settlement on it, bro. From from like the, the 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 um the judge gave me a big settlement and stuff. But I was like, man, I'm not even like really like looking forward to this shit, man. Damn. Like I'm like, man, shit. I'm like, not not that I'm sad. I'm like, I'm just not. I don't, I'm I don't want to chase this person for this money. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm 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 not I'm not really in the mood for chasing no more money, anyways. Though, like. I'm like, man, this shit is all my money. I'm like really fighting for my money. Like this shit, and like I'm like this shit don't make no sense. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's where I just got in with it. I'm like, I'm fighting for my money and the work that I'm doing and stuff, though. I'm trying to fight it from other people getting my shit, though. This shit right. hard. But I mean, it's hard at first, though. But like, shit, I have found out other ways to make money. That's what made everything way, way, way easier, you know? Well, let's fast forward a little bit. You know what I mean? A couple of days ago, Travis Scott released his new project. Mm-hmm. Uh, your co-producer, the first song there. Uh, tell us a little bit about how that came about. Well, um... I got a producer on the team, my boy B Weezy. And then um <clears throat> Yeah, we um, definitely heard of him. Yeah, that's my guy. I've been working with him for forever. Really. He he like he like one of one of them top top tier guys though that they really, really sleeping on. Like they really sleeping on him. Like they and he every producer that's in my circle that y'all would affiliate me with, they all know him. And and they know what's up with him. Then they're crazy. I feel like, like a lot of producers right. know him for his sound design and his kits and stuff that he's put out too. They need to go listen to that man beats, bro. Like that nigga tight, bro. I ain't gonna lie. <clears throat> that nigga is retarded with it. Bro. It don't make no sense. So it was bro. you, him, and B Corn, and then um, and then um, Thirty Rock was on it too. Mm-hmm. Um, well, <clears throat> we went to L.A. originally, and then um, it was like a couple months before the um, before the album came out, and then um, my boy um, I had um, 
I flew my boy Buizzi out there with me, and then my boy B Corn had just gave me some new samples and stuff, though. And me and Buizzi just cooking up, mm. just cooking up beats, and then we had a whole little pack. And then um, I had took the beats over to um, what you call it, to, uh, Travis Scott, and then um, just playing them and stuff. They weren't finished or nothing. Like the the, the Stargates and beat, I was, I, it was not finished. Like it was like, you know what I'm saying? It was like, it's like you know, like it was. In he walked making. in and said, "Pull that up." <laughs> so well, like, to... like the way the way, the way that, um, that he be working is a little different. It's kind of like they record everything, you know, like so everything recording like as it's going. Mm. So you, as if it stop or something, like like the microphones be recording, like everything be recording, you know, like so I might be making a beat and like I might add a sound in there or something just for a second and, and probably delete it, but it, you know, like it's still recording all through like Pro Tools and stuff. Everything mm. being recorded in, so it ain't missing nothing though. Mm. So like um. It's kind of like how we did that song though. As as he was recording, I was sitting right there just messing with the beat too. You know, that's just, dope. you know, and that's that's just how he be recording though. It should be tight. That's a dope way to do it. So that brings us to the oh, overrated right, underrated right, segment right. on the Producer Grind podcast. We are here on Overrated Underrated with Sunny Digital, and Sunny, what we do is we present you with five topics. You simply respond overrated or underrated. If we feel it merits further discussion, we'll ask you to explain. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. So we have the overrated, underrated segment on the Producer Grind podcast with Sunny Digital. Overrated, underrated, chasing placements. Overrated. I think we've been talking about yeah, that. Yeah, that was pretty easy. Chasing yeah. shit. Yeah. That, that shit is easy. overrated. Overrated, underrated, cooking up by yourself. Underrated. Talk about it. Sometimes you, you really dig, dig in your bag like when you by yourself. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people be hitting me up. Let's collab, let's collab, like, man, like, you know, it's cool. Like, when I'm in that mood, though, but I'm, like, a lot of times, like, and then when you collab with people, like, when you work with people, you got to, like, you know, and, and other people that's creative and they good at what they do, you kind of got to, like, really take in the input, too. Mm. Not saying I don't want to, but shit, this might not be what I want to do. Right, at right. that moment. You know what I'm saying? At right. that moment, it might be tight, though, but it might not be what I want to do. Right. You know, so. Because it's art, right? It's so subjective. Yeah, but I mean, mm-hmm. it's not bad to collab though. But I'm just not like just like the biggest on it though. But then sometimes, like let's say, it's going to the next level with it. Don't we fuck around and get a hit or get a placement and shit though? Now we gotta goddamn come back to the table and figure out who who got who what. Was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nigga start acting funny and shit. Like you know, hey like, bro, that was my high hat right there. That was my open hat. <laughs> so you know, we've had guests in the past that say they just say, hey, if we all worked on it. We split it. Fifty fifty. It's fifty fifty. Yeah, know? that's 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 how I do. I've been doing it like that. Been doing the it easiest like that. way. I've been doing it like that even with like um. Man, we did had this song a long time ago with the Migos and stuff, the young nigga song with, with Q and them, right? It was, but it was so confusing because I was the only one at them that was in the game at the time, though. So I'm telling them, I'm telling everybody this is how it goes. Like, the producer get 50% of the song, and then, like, y'all got to spill the rest of the shit, though. You know what I'm saying? But nobody understanding it. They thinking it's all unfair. But then, you know, I was like, man, fuck it. You know what I'm doing? I'm just take this 100% split it between everybody that's on the mm. song, though, just so... Mm. You know, everybody get their percentage and stuff, though. It, it look right and make and make it feel right to them, though, because we'll, we'll all make more money than... Later on. Yeah, you know yeah, what I'm saying? The yeah. percentage and stuff, though, that's more like... That's that's like your 401k. That's what you get. From, that's the percentage or whatever song you... Whatever you get from that song that you'll get eventually down the road when mm-hmm. all the money from the album or whatever or from the song recoup. You know, like... It's not like... That's not like now money. That's like later on money and stuff, though. That's like stacked up money, you know? Overrated, underrated on the Producer Grind podcast with Sunny Digital. Overrated, underrated, MIDI and Melody Loops. Overrated. That's not what I expected. I'd like you to explain that one. You thought you think you thought I was about to say those are cool? Yeah, everybody's got a different opinion. I mean, they cool to a certain extent though. I feel like, all right, so a lot of these niggas, they getting away with just making these loops and not really making beats anymore. I'm, I am I produce. I make, I make, I do this shit. You know, like I, I know how to do it. I really was, like, into this shit, though. Like, I was like, man, I really want to learn how to do this shit. Like, I really take pride into, like, making the beat that you won't be able to tell I made, bro. I'm really into that shit, though, mm-hmm. unless I want you to know I made it, unless I put that sunny digital tag in front of that motherfucker. Mm. I be into that shit. I, I got I got shit that I don't want people like just to be able to pinpoint me on. You know what I'm saying? And that that be me being like creative and stuff though. And like people want want you to respect their art and all that stuff though. You know, which is cool. I respect all this stuff though. But I feel like you should be able to if you're able to do the samples and do them loops. And those are so easy to do. So easy, bro. R- ridiculously easy, bro. Like 
I feel like if, if if you're able to make some shit by yourself though, like if you're able to like make make some banging shit without using a loop, then you you more than welcome go use up them loops and stuff though. But if you just relying on loops and you just that's all you using and you know like that's that's what all this shit is like. Calm down, bro. Like you know, you know get, get creative. Like you know, like like all you doing is adding drums, bro. I nice. feel like I feel like okay, me being at where I'm at though, I feel like I can do that. Our Metro can do it. Our Sizzle can do that. We just add drums. We didn't prove them. Okay, we didn't got down. We didn't exhausted our brains and stuff. Now you know what I'm saying. We didn't got down. Put out every melody that we can get out this motherfucker though. You know what I'm saying. We down there just be looking at those for for inspiration and stuff though. We can make those same melodies. You know, like it's like not using using it as a tool, not as a crutch. Yeah, for us though, but other people using it as a, as real, a crutch, real crutch, bro. Like you take that away, they can't even make the beat. They didn't make no fire beat. You probably can do some drums, but I mean, you can't do no drums without the melody. Mm-hmm. You know, so it just you know, I fucks with it though, and I'm not mad at it at all though. Like it's it's a real efficient way to move up through the game. It's like a new a new little lane of money and stuff though, and it, it's and like the people who making the samples are eating too. Like QB's I fucks with them. It. Frank Dukes, all them, like, they're my homies. I fucks with them, but then it get it, people, people don't don't think about this. Like it get kind of weird though. This is the thing with with them people that send out them samples too. Like so they'll send them to everybody in the same circles. We all in the same room with the same artists. We all even if we're not there to get the same time, we're all rotating, be in the same room. Now we didn't got them got the all these same samples from everybody though, and we all using them and shit though, and we, now. The artist looking at you. Like, yeah, like, what y'all got going on? Like, you just, yeah. you just played the same sample. <laughs> same you know what I'm yeah. saying? You know what I'm saying? Like, to them, it's probably the same beat, too. Not you know even. I mean? it, not not even, though. Not even. Like, because somebody might pitch it up. Somebody might pitch it mm. all the way down. Some might be different. But then it's like, but we all got these same things. Like, people, <clears throat> like, the artists that we work with, though, like, they, these are artists we work with and stuff, though. So they know. You know what I'm saying? They'll know. They're going to know off real. Like, oh, dang, this nigga just, you know, like, like, it just, like, the shit almost happened. Like, one time, though, I seen shit, though, like, it happened almost happened with me with Q Beats and stuff and um and Cardo. Don't don't nobody know except for me because I was almost the one put in the situation though. It was because the only reason I didn't get in the situation because Cardo had he had got that he had played whatever beat it was that he made with the Q Beat sample too before I did though, and then I had heard it before he had played it, so I knew not to play mine. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I was in a sticky situation right there. That people ain't even know it. I was like, oh shit, let me back out, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I was like, but that that's why I don't really like them samples is cool though. But even like the way that they be moving with them though, like I had to start telling them, like, man, don't send me nothing that you gonna send him over there though, because we might fuck around and be in the same room or something. Like, you know, just give me like an exclusive little five pack mm. where I can do my own little thing and you know, it's just something, you know what I'm saying? Just so so I can feel comfortable though. Cause like right now I'm not I don't feel comfortable like using nobody's samples and stuff though. Especially if it's not like we making it right there on the spot. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like I don't be feeling comfortable though because like, and I'm not I'm not mad at it though. It's just like I just don't want to be in that that weird position and shit though. You know what I'm saying? Like as that far as sense. like you know, I don't want to be in that weird position. But I, I respect them from doing those samples and stuff though. They they capping, they killing it. Like boy, it's just like 15 seconds of a little loop. You send it off. You do about 10, 20 of those. One of them motherfuckers gonna land. Two of them, something, something gonna land, bro. And you can send it to all these producers and stuff. It's gonna end up in the right hand somewhere, bro. Somewhere. You're spreading a lot of seeds. You're spreading, You're spreading a, a lot whole of lot of seeds, bro. And they have, they got sub, they got sub people under there doing it with them too. So you know, like, like they, they really just <clears throat> killing it, bro. It seems like it should go without saying that if you're gonna use one of those, you're gonna do your own thing and put your own twist on it. I was watching. Yeah, a, I mean, Kirk. you, you. It's only so much you can do with them samples, bro. Half time it, reverse Half time, it. time, time <laughs> pitch it up. You did pitch it down. Kind of like whoever come, whoever make it to that sample first and does those ideals first to it, though. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because it's, it's only so much you can do with them and stuff, though. And with these people already coming in with the idea of where I'm just gonna chop this sample, they're not coming in with the idea. Of, I'm gonna chop this shit up like on some crazy shit, though. They like it's like a goddamn production line, assembly line. We just need to get these shits in and out. Mm-hmm. Curtis King was saying he did a um a beat critique thing and he was saying that like three of the people that sent in beats caught he caught a copyright strike because they all had the same loop and so whoever like put it on first yeah registered it so the two people that came behind him that got copyright strikes copyright strikes and he was just saying like man do something to it chop it up pitch it halftime shape it yeah see that's that's the problem with them samples and stuff it's just like a regular sample like you know what i'm saying like like an like, old school song. Yeah, it's just like the same shit though, bro. But like, it's just like, just more like, it's more out here now. You know what I'm saying? And we using all the same shit though, you know? Overrated, underrated on the Producer Grind podcast with Sunny Digital. Overrated, underrated beat battles. Mm, 
That's kind of like a hard space. If it's uh, all right, <laughs> answer the question. <sighs> See, you did some. You came up doing beat battles, right? Yeah, I actually got to go judge one on the eighth on Wednesday. I wish. Oh. Got to judge one up there, and so I enjoy doing those. You know, that's just because I'm I'm a producer, and I enjoy like finding them people though. But I would say that it is probably. I don't know. Those shits is weird, bro. Like sometimes <laughs> after about like an hour of that shit, you be like, dog, man. It's kind of like going through beats in the email and shit, though. You know, like, yeah, tired. yeah, like I be getting tired. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know if that's underrated or overrated, though. Like it's kind of like in between. It's like it's like it's just rated. It's just nah, rated, bro. Well, we, like, you know, we do our, we do a beat, our VIP beat showcase and we love it. But you know, as we plan for, we're like, okay, it's gonna be two solid, maybe three solid hours of just beat after beat after beat. You see, I'm done that. I, I can, I can definitely make it through it though. But I really just gotta be like into it though, like you know. But then in the same token though, like I said, like, I'm looking for like producers and stuff though. So I'm kind of like those, those, those are kind of like what my days consist of. Like that, that'll be like, like um, me going, going to my email, but going to do it in real life type shit though. You know what I'm saying? In real like, life email. You can have a couple <laughs> drinks. Yeah, exactly. You know what I'm saying? Like, like it's just going out, being in the mix, doing what I do, and I know they'll like to see me too. And yeah. just link anyways though. So I just go. I, I like doing that type of shit though. Like, what would you say to the producer that thinks he's gonna go win the beat battle and his career is gonna get started and his life is gonna change? It's not you. I mean, you can win. That's probably about as big as it's gonna go. You know what I'm saying? Like, shit don't change overnight. I mean, mm-hmm. it could. You know what I'm saying? These times of days rare. though, but like. Producers, even still producers, bro, the money comes so goddamn slow, your shit not gonna change overnight. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, you're not gonna goddamn just get a, a, a hundred band lick like over. Nah, hell no, nah, we gotta work this shit out before we get his hundred bands. You gonna, you know, it's gonna be a minute, man, for sure. Mm. We get change around, man. Overrated, underrated, FL20. Underrated. Mm. Only reason I say it's underrated is because they fucked up when they put out 12, right? We put out 12 and 12 was whack, bro. It was trash. <laughs> super trash, bro. 12 was like super trash, bro. Were Fucking you one of the guys up. that stayed on 11? Stayed on 11 and 10. 11 and 10, and, but 12 was super trash. But then on 20, they came back and put a lot of shit in there. Like on 20, like they put the legacy effects back on there because they took them off in 12, bro. Mm. To the legacy effects out of 12. And then, um, I think they did. I believe they did. I'm not 100% sure, but I did not like, I did not like 12. So I kind of was in and out. I tried it. Like I told you, I'm like, I can't get down with this shit. It like, felt man. different. It 20, like, 20 feels more like 11, though. 20 is like 11. They put they put a lot more shit back into like into it, though. Like into it like they had took out. Like, it's like little shit, though. Like little shit. I feel like with with 12, what they was trying to do was trying to confuse, like, um, not even confuse, but make it harder to enter into the shit, though. Because everything was placed in a confusing place. Like, it was even confusing for me. I've been I've been making beats on that forever. And I was right, like, man, right. I can't find shit on this motherfucker. <laughs> like, like it was it was almost like it was made for the um for the new age kids, though. Because mm-hmm. a, a lot of newer kids, they like it. Like, my nephew, he make beats. Like, he fuck with that shit, though. So, um. He cold? Uh, I don't think not yet, bro. He's still working on it. You know what I'm saying? He ain't, <laughs> he, he ain't come to me yet, like on some like he, you know you got some fire shit as a producer. You know what I'm saying? You be like, oh shit, I just made this. Like <laughs> as a producer, you gonna you are you gonna surprise yourself though. But he he, he not there yet though. He just being in his headphones, so he's trying to put it together. But um, what's it what's it like to watch that? You know what I'm saying? Like, cause it's different now. We could kind of watch them. There was nobody there to kind of watch us coming up. Hmm. It's different, you know. Like they, they attention span ain't on that though. They can look at their phone. It's like, even I can look at my phone just get on Instagram. And it's over with. You know what I'm saying? Like that beat I'm just making might have might have forget about that shit. Might fuck around see some ass cheeks on the screen. It's over. Like, like, like dead ass, bro. Like swear to God though, but nah. But like um, it's cool. But I mean, like they, they attention span still be short though. Like imagine like back then when I when I was trying to make beats and stuff, I couldn't just like. That was like the fun for me though. So I had to figure out whatever it was I was trying to figure out. I couldn't just dub it and be like, I'm about to go do something else. Yeah, shit yeah. You know what I'm saying? Right now, if you can't figure out some shit, you might fuck around and try to do some other shit, man. You know, like, you'd be like, fuck it, man. But I was kind of like, just stuck right there making beats. I'm, I'm going to figure it out. And then, you know, once you figure it out, it'll become fun again. Most okay. mm-hmm. So that brings us to the um factor on the producer grind podcast. We didn't have one more. We didn't have one more on the um factor or the overrated underrated. No, we did nah, all five. Yeah, yeah that was it. Yeah, oh, that okay. was all five. Yeah. 
They just want to oh, Am I doing the unfactor? You doing the unfactor? Who's? Uh, I mean, sure, you can go ahead and do the unfactor. No, I, okay. All right, cool. well, we got a we got a segment on here called the unfactor. <laughs> well, basically, what we do is we give you a topic to talk about for mm-hmm. about thirty for thirty seconds, where we don't want you to pause, say um, or any stop. So you just got to ca- keep talking for consistently. Yeah. So, L, you want you got the timer ready? I got the timer ready. And what's the topic for today? The difference between Sunny Digital in 2012 and Sunny Digital in 2018. There you go. There's a twin sunny ready? Oh. Are you ready? Yeah. Yep. Ready? Set. Go. The difference between Sunny Digital in 2018 and Sunny Digital in 2012 is that he's a lot more smarter, a lot more wiser, got a lot more. 20 seconds. Friends. A lot more producer friends. Um. I- <laughs> <laughs> but keep going though, real quick. Um, honestly, I just I, the same digital in 2018. I just I really know a lot more stuff though, like about like this industry, know how to move. Um, I'm just a lot more wiser about this, bro. It's just it's crazy. Like the time, all this time and everything I went through. I thought it was bad when I was going through it. It was, but getting through it is like. The best part though, getting mm-hmm. through this shit though, just just be cool. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm a, I'm free man. You know what I'm saying? I'm <laughs> chilling, man. I'm like, man, I'm, I'm older now. I'm 27 now, so it's like I've been going through that since I was like, like 18, 19, almost. Almost 10 years. Yeah. So like, like I'm just I'm just relaxed. I'm happy now. I'm just happy, just cooling, just chilling, just trying to push forward type shit though. You know what I'm saying? Not even trying. I still been pushing forward though. Just you know, now now it's kind of like it's a little more. Incentive to do it though is mm-hmm. fun to like. It's cool, you know. Like even like like working on the Travis stuff without I'm I'm feeling like like just, that weight on your back for that pressure. Yeah, you make make it a whole lot funner, whole lot better. You know what I'm saying? Are you, gonna, are you gonna join him on tour at some point? Nah, uh, okay. nah, 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 nah. What can we um look for in 2018 from you? Like what new projects? Anything we'd be look, on the lookout for? We know you're building that studio in Atlanta. Yeah, that's really my main focus right now. So um. I'm still doing music and stuff. I'm doing like um, I'm gonna show you this shit. I'm gonna show you this picture right quick, just so you can have an idea of what the music probably gonna sound like. It's gonna take us back to what we was talking about earlier about sharing the vision. Yep. Hopefully, I'm gonna be one of those people that actually get it. And so, <laughs> I'm about to do. I'm about to yeah. do this. This whole little groovy. This whole little groovy shit, man. I fuck with that. Don't show it. Don't show it. Don't show it. Don't show it. Don't show oh, it. Is it. Okay, that can't be on yeah. camera. You blur it out. Put the black box over. Yeah, I feel cold. that. It's gonna yeah, be like, I'll, I'll show you. yeah, I'm too cold. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna be some crazy shit though. Like, like, like the next, the next project gonna be on some shit like that. Don't like, and I plan on dropping that one. Like, um, like probably like, like real soon though. Like, like I want to finish it up though. My my guitar player just came came back in town and stuff, so oh, he'll be back. Well, he here today, so he gonna pull up on me like around like eight o'clock. We oh, and so, so we are gonna get back to work on it. We saw you were in uh Hawaii working. For a little bit, was that you working on your artistry stuff for producers? Travis. Stuff? Oh, the Travis. Oh. Yeah, who's out there? He Travis had everybody out there working. Right. Yeah, we was in a crazy house, bro. The house was crazy. Yeah, we was all out there. Yeah, it was like some some reality TV show house. The beach right in the back. You got there. <laughs> Shit was stupid, bro. How long you out there? Like a week. Mm. Yeah, like I was stayed out there for a week. Everybody was in there. We was it was dope. It was cool vibes in there. Like that was like my second time though being with Travis though. As far as like working on the album though, a lot of people don't even know I worked on a rodeo. Mm. Mm. I did the first song on the rodeo too. Mm. On that one, the pornography. I think I did probably the last song on the album too. Like, but you know, I ain't got you know, on his albums. Ain't no tags in there, so mm. people don't know unless they look it up. That's and, like a uh, thing he does. I guess so. No, but I don't really go against it at this point. I don't really care no more though. Like as far as like with the tag, like that's just me. I'm not telling all the other producers to do it though. You know, I kind of got my little brand. I feel like people be more excited to see my name when they don't know I did it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, right. And like, and so like, like um, oh snap, he made that. Yeah, you that's know how so. when I seen the Astro World, I was like, oh shoot. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you know I like saying? that you say that. That's just me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> These guys be taking. <laughs> well, so and so said, so I should. Yeah. Hey man, you're your own individual. Yeah, yeah that's, that, that's just how. That's how I'm able to operate. You know what I'm saying? Like I can, I can do that. Not saying nobody else. Anybody can do what they want to do, but like. Like, I, I just got a little more room to kind of, like, not put my tag in certain shit, though. You know what I'm saying? And people be looking forward to my tag. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. I was surprised know. to hear that you worked with Mac Miller. Like, what projects did you work with him on? <clears throat> Mac Miller? Did I work with Mac Miller? 
Was that in the tag? Was he, that, he, he's was on it, the list. Was it one of the... Have you worked, have you worked with him at all? I asked you if you wanted to go over the questions. I was going to ask you to make sure all the artists were active. <laughs> <laughs> I, took, nah, actually, I took Mac Miller off. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty off. sure... Like, have you worked with him or just curious? No, nah, I'm pretty sure I have. I know me and him for sure. We have had a conversation. Yeah. Though. It was like specifically... Well, that was just... That just brought me to the point. Like yeah. I was in, I was like, Mac Miller, something digital. I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, that's not, what's up. Not, not for sure. We did something like a, like a while back for sure, though. I remember because we was texting like... When I say every artist in this industry, bro, I didn't, I didn't, even Logic, bro. Oh, that's what's up. Yeah. I ain't say I don't work with him, but like, like, I, but, but I didn't, me and him, like, we didn't brush shoulders, like, even like alone, like, it was so long ago, bro, like. Rat Pack days, like, Sinat- this, early Sinatra days. This is when he was first, when he first got signed, though, and the label didn't want to let, let nobody know that he was signed and stuff, bro. Mm. This is when I was, I was moving around, this is when I was first moving around, like, when Rex and stuff first came out, it was like, that long ago type shit, though, like. Dang. They ain't, like, he wasn't popping. Like, he was popping, but he wasn't, like, how he is today, yeah. though. Like, but, like on some industry plan shit, he just wasn't known? He was known, but he wasn't, like, known, like, how he is. Like, he was, like, he wasn't, like, all the way known, but, like, he. Yeah, like, these last couple he, albums took him to a whole. Yeah, yeah level, he, he like, was at the point where, like, 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 like you know, like, like people was, like, we don't need labels type shit, though. Like, heavy. Like, he was, like, that's where it was at, though, like, with him. So, like, like they didn't want to, like, tarnish his whole image, like, his whole indie image. Mm-hmm. So, they didn't want him to, like, really be known, like, to be signed to a label and stuff at the time, though, when I had met him a long time ago. But, like, a lot of these people, like, even, like, I had the opportunity to work with, like, them and everybody, though, but. I can't remember if I did anything for Mac Miller though. I wouldn't be surprised if I did, and I don't remember. <laughs> mm. well, I was I just curious because like that that um your new project that you was talking about had the same like the way you were that picture reminded me of his album that he just released just recently, so it had the same vibe. So I was wondering. Um, I haven't heard his new album, but um, I'm pretty sure this it's shit. On, it's like on that same vibe. It's like on that same vibe. So I was like, I'm pretty sure his shit ain't like mine though. I mean, not nah. I know it ain't. I know it ain't. No, no offense, but he he's he's white. I'm black, bro. <laughs> like no offense, like no, you know, that's like, fair. like 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 that's fair. Like like you probably look up to me. <laughs> well, some some weird shit though. I look up to somebody in the in the clique though. You know, you never know. You know, but like the shit like and I, his shit fire though. I'm just saying our shit is not no, going. Yeah, our yeah. shit ain't gonna sound the same. You know what I'm saying? I'm kind of making sure. I'm kind of taking. I'm taking. Great pride in this this next project that I'm doing. Well, though, that's what's so. up. We definitely look forward to hearing it and check, definitely checking it out. Yeah, Definitely. it's it's gonna be crazy, bro. I guarantee you, bro, this shit gonna be crazy. And it's live instruments all through there. Like, I ain't playing with you. <laughs> I ain't <laughs> is, playing is, with you. Is there what does the production team look like on that real quick? Um, just me. I'm producing everything on there. But you got this, huh? You got some live instrumentation. Yeah, okay. I got them. Them the same people like um um the nigga who played at the end of Down the Man song fifty cent. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Same same dude bringing them back in. We about to just do a whole full project and stuff type stuff. Like that's some crazy shit though, and then um, I only, I'm only producing a lot of stuff myself. Just so when it comes time to put it out, I don't gotta like handle too much business with it. I can I just damn it, just put it out. You know what I'm saying? Like so, I ain't gotta be going back and forth with nobody. Be trying to pay somebody, and you know, like, and it's less payout. Yeah, yeah you know, it's less payout than like when it's time to get paid and stuff. It's gonna <laughs> it's gonna be a lot easier. You know, okay. like like so, I'm work I'm working like towards that way. With that, it though. that brings me to ask: Can people just buy Sunny Digital Beat in 2018? Nah, <laughs> it, it wasn't like that. It wasn't. It stopped being like that. Probably like around like 2012, 2013. It's been like, like that for a minute. Yeah, it's for a bit. It's been like that for a long, long time though. It's, I got select people who I sell to. Like, I still got like niggas who sell dope. Like like who done bought beat train from back then. Like you ever bought a beat from me ever? Your grandfather yeah. then. Your grandfather then. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like you good, you good for life, like you good for life. You can always come by and be whatever yeah. your price was then too. Like you good. Like, mm, like I'm not. Up. I ain't gonna. I ain't gonna tax you anything yeah. though. You know, like whatever your shit was back then. I'm. I'm. I'm gonna honor that price to to this day and stuff though. Even like, the one hundred dollar guys, the one fifty. Mm. Even them guys, bro. <laughs> shit, I swear to God, bro, because they believed in me when 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 shit when nobody was bro, shit. You know what I'm so saying? So they. they I, get I that guess shit here's free. the thing is, if you could afford Sunny when he was one hundred fifty dollars, where's your rap career going? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, bro. See, that's a little different, bro. <laughs> nah, see, I, I play I play it kind of the same way too. Like if, if it's a song that I like, you know what I'm saying, and they ask me to get on it, I get on that shit for free. I don't mind getting on shit though. I don't even know what the charge is as far as being an artist. So a lot of times I'm not even like getting on people's stuff though. But I if I like awesome. it though, I mean shit, I don't really see no value in that. I see I see more value in the brand though. So I'd rather if the song is good, I'd rather get on the good song to get on the bad song and get paid for it. Yeah, I'm joking. Man. That's just nah. the price that every rapper, like every rapper, a thousand. Like nigga, who the fuck? Yeah, I mean, but I mean, shit. 
Doing a verse, do all this shit. A verse, I do a verse for like if somebody wanted to give me that, I don't give a damn shit. That shit just free. It's like for me, like the verses and stuff, that shit like a hobby right now, though. It's shit yeah. fun, free money, but I rather I still rather just like if the price is that low, I would rather do it for free. So people mm-hmm. can't say like, oh, well, you did it for for this amount of money and that's your fee and stuff though. Mm-hmm. And it's it's gotta be something that I like. If I like the song, bro, it just make it easier to do too. You know what I'm saying? And then I don't I don't want I don't want to be on the bad song anyways. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm trying. I got. I got a brand that I want to like build and uphold. You know, I want to be on like good shit though. And I, I'm not looking to charge people though, cause I can make I can make so much money just off the brand though. Cause I done I, I done that as a producer. I can only I can only imagine like as an artist, a person that's got a voice, like like what kind of opportunities they have though. You know, like a person like me, I'm behind the scenes and I'm still getting opportunities. Like now, when I'm in front and I got a voice and people paying attention, like. Them opportunities are probably endless right now, you know, like just cause just cause of the voice, just cause you people listening to what you say. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? So crazy question, but if in 2018 you don't know how to find Sunny Digital on social media, where can we find you? Mm-hmm. Um at Sunny Digital Everything. S O N N Y D I G I T A L Everything. Mm-hmm. You pretty active? Yeah, I be on there. I be um um, mostly I like Twitter a lot, bro. Twitter fun as hell, bro. That shit so that shit, <laughs> Twitter so funny, man. That shit be so so funny. I'd be on there all day. I I can talk a little more on Twitter, like versus like Instagram. Mm. Instagram, you know, that shit like a, a social status um, yeah. place, bro. Like you can't you you only on there for a reason type shit though. Like yeah, it's big cap on there, man. You can't you can't do shit on the ground, bro. You gotta look your 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 cool gotta be on a honey every time you go on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> you can't you can't, you can't, you can't lack on that motherfucker. But but Twitter, <laughs> Twitter, that's a fun place, bro. Nigga be goddamn. It's easy to um on Twitter too. Like it's easier like to drop music on there and stuff. Though and people like people be like more receptive on Twitter and stuff. Though like when when I drop music on there, mm-hmm. like I can I can actually see people being active and people listening to it and retweeting and like saying what they think about the song versus like when I'm on like um Instagram. You don't you know. know. You don't really know. A lot of people, like I said, that everybody cool be on a hundred on Instagram. So like a lot of people are listening. But they're not gonna say anything though. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? That's just how I go. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people, they they just too cool. They too cool to like do certain things on the on the ground though. You know what I'm saying? On Twitter, it's a different story. Twitter is a different story. You know, Twitter, everybody <laughs> active on that motherfucker. <laughs> on, on Instagram, you can you can't just like what you like. <laughs> but you can't like see. I I feel like people like more active like that on um. On I feel. Like, oh, I feel like people are more active like that, like on on um. Hey, with y'all? No. Nah. No, that's, that's, that's somebody. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> nah, like uh, they they more active on like on Twitter than um, Instagram because it's probably easier to go viral on Twitter versus Instagram. Mm-hmm. A lot of people don't. I don't think people be realizing that. Like, don't retweets. People a lot of stuff go from Twitter to Instagram. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And then it just bounce back from Instagram to Twitter to the people that kind of missed it and stuff. Though you know. Well, speaking of Twitter, I've seen you tweet a few times. Like people uh, sometimes mistake you. Like one time uh, with Metro and yeah. PNB Rock. I, I got everything. I got Metro, PNB Rock, Wiz, all type of shit. I got everything, bro. But right now, right now, currently, I'm getting a lot of PNB Rock. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can see that though. I'm getting, I'm getting loads of it. I, sometimes, sometimes I see it. I'll be like, one time I seen a picture. I'm like, damn, that nigga look like, <laughs> like me, bro. Like, yeah, it's cool though. At first, I used to get mad, yeah. but now this shit is kind of funny though. It's, I'll be like, so what happens when you tell people like, nah, bro, that ain't me. You probably be like, yeah, I am Metro. <laughs> yeah, nah, I am PNB. I think right. that, now, nowadays, I think I'm about to start doing that. Yeah. Like, like, yeah. Start signing the autographs. Yeah, I might just start doing this shit on some funny humbug <laughs> shit, though, and they going to win it. Because it, it's kind of like sometimes, like, they be like, off, but they they be like in the loop though. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Like y'all, you almost right. You know what I'm saying? Like you almost there. Like you know what I'm saying? But it, it be funny. Like I used to be getting mad back then though, but now it's it's just funny though. It be like this shit just like legit hilarious though. Like. This shit just happened in the airport. Some kids just yelled, PNB rocks. <laughs> I was like, man, like, nope. <laughs> this nigga, nigga, look, de- nigga look devastated. Nigga like, he's not PNB rock? Like, <laughs> like nah, I don't want to hear no sunny digital. Exactly. I thought you were PNB. <laughs> I'm looking forward to going to a show, to be honest. Going to a sunny digital yeah. show? Yeah, yeah. We're yeah. just planning out one. Like, I want to do like that. I want to do like, um, like I said, that live stuff. Mm-hmm. I, I, I was going to do a show out here mm-hmm. in January. It was January we was going to do a show. But doing shows is not one of the easiest things to do as far as, like... Setting it up. 
like, all right, getting people to come to the show, getting people to come to a show is easy. Getting people to come and pay to see a show, mm. it's a different story. Especially being from the city and stuff, though. You know what I'm saying? They so used to seeing me on a humbug, they be, right. they be like, oh, we not I'm about to pay. I'm about to pay you. <laughs> yeah, you know, and I understand it, though. You know what I'm saying? I ain't mad at it, though. But, like, when I when I did that show, that shit wasn't being um ran by me. And so I had, I was trying to do, like, um me, I was trying to do $5 tickets. They were trying to do, like, $20 tickets. Mm. I was like, listen, I'm trying to tell these people. I'm like, I'm not stupid. Understand what y'all got going on, but let me tell you what we all gonna win at. Y'all do five dollars a fucking ticket. We can pack out the whole fucking building, right? Pack out the building and goddamn um we can do that and then um put the merch in there and stuff though. Cause I'm not mm-hmm. looking to goddamn make money from like from none, none of the people. I'm not looking to make money from the shit though. I, I I can make money on the merch though, the people in there. Mm-hmm. But the people in there, I can goddamn make crazy money on the merch and stuff though. So I'm like, Lord number for the people to get in there. Hey, your so menu you packed out, merch. you know what I'm saying? Y'all mm-hmm. keep the door. And I just get all the shop the merch and shit, though. And then motherfucking, it just be a whole bunch of people. Everybody win. Everybody eating and stuff. The people get a good show. They buy up the merch. Got down the people, the, the venue, they get their money. You know what I'm saying? Whatever they, whatever they expense was, whatever their expense was, my thing, too, if, even if, like, I set the tickets at $5 and, like, the capacity was, like, a thousand people. So you do a thousand times $5 and see, see how much you'll come out to. And if, say if they, they, like, um, they budget was like a like more than that though. I they needed more money or stuff. Mm-hmm. Like I I'd be like I'm just I just cover like the rest, the of, rest it, of it. Yeah, yeah. And then on top of that too, even like like I said, that merch would be making so much money. You know what I'm saying? That like the merch is already making more money than all the shit though. It's just a matter of the people being there though. You know what I'm saying? Like the people there, they gonna you buy gotta that have shit the people the there to buy up. the merch. They don't play the merch. People be boy, them people be in there buying that shit the fuck. Up, bro. Nah, I feel you. I remember the jackets, all that shit though. Oh my gosh, bro. PayPal shut my account down because of them jackets, bro. Damn. They shut down my goddamn account. PlayStation sent me a goddamn... Uh, Decent decision? Yes, sir. Damn. They sent that you. shit straight to I my house and shit. I know how that goes. Real quick, though, because we we actually... We, we got about a minute left here, but... um, Real quick, because I know you're big in the, uh, you know, smoking culture. What's Sunny Digital's favorite strain? OG. Yes, my guy. Hey, I just got <laughs> caught in Georgia, though, in Douglasville with some weed. It took me to jail for that shit. Get and, the fuck out of here. Yeah. Jail. That's they can't right. just give you a ticket. They had to take you to jail. Out there. They, they, that's different. Georgia. That's yeah, not Atlanta. Like that's Georgia. Be fall, yeah, right? yeah, exactly. You know, Georgia. you know, like in the city of Atlanta, they be on it though, but it's at their discretion though. They still can do the same shit in Atlanta though. They want to, you know, like I, I just went to a lawyer today. He's telling me a lot of stuff though, but um, you know, like, I don't know, they was talking about you might have to do probation and all that shit. I'm like, honestly, at this point, I've been, I just smoke so much. I'm like, I probably can't take a year off. You know what I'm saying? Right. <laughs> <laughs> You know what yeah. I'm saying? And I can take a year. I have my mind clear. Not, not even saying it's cloudy right now, though. But you know, like they just think that I can't play that game. Though they think it's about to be hard for a nigga to not not be smoking and shit. Like mm. I'm not I'm not addicted to this shit, though. But I just like to smoke, though. We got 20 mm. seconds for the sounds gonna go. It's all good. But yeah, OG. We definitely OG man for real. For real smokers, no. Well, yeah, uh, we definitely appreciate you pulling up, bro. Love, bro. I appreciate y'all. Appreciate you. Episode, right. man. Peace. Peace. Peace.